Ситиной Стейкой Васильевичей. Thank you, Master of uh, Proceedings. I hope this technology will uh, obey what I wanted to give you here. Um, Dr. Alfred Van Kent, the ED of our ministry, the university representatives, the President of the Association of Private Higher Education Institutions in Namibia, Professor Namandi, the CEOs of our SOEs, the deans, directors, professors, and lecturers, Chivet Center managers and heads of uh, departments, leaders of all our tertiary institutions that are present, esteemed invited guests, student organization leadership, student leaders, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We are fast approaching the very end of the three days higher education training, leadership and stakeholders consultative engagement. And you would agree with me that a platform such as this one was truly needed. I'm happy as Minister responsible for higher education and training to have witnessed what I believe were successful deliberations on critical matters directed at our sector. Once again, I wish to thank all of you I wish to thank all of you for having availed time for this strategic engagement. It surely proves that we are committed to seeing improvement and we are also sharpening our institutions for them to be able to be ready and responsive in terms of the education that we intend to offer the Namibian child. Your participation and, the, and contributions have made that have made a highly appreciated. A hand of applause for all of us. Yes, a lot has been achieved since independence. We have witnessed many positive changes and reforms. However, you'd agree with me that a lot still has to be done. And if there is anything that we have witnessed over so many decades since our independence is that, I can confidently say indeed many reforms and changes have taken place, but there is one important element that we have been short in fall on, and that is monitoring and evaluation of many of our reforms. I hope with the current one, we will actually uh, apply the necessary measures in terms of monitoring and evaluating what we need to evaluate. In my opening statement on Wednesday, I indicated that the purpose of these three days is mainly for us to reflect on our mandates, and I believe we have done that quite well, to also engage each other and see where we can identify positive synergies that we could expand on and enrich our formal education system. We are also to assess as to whether we are fully fulfilling our roles and functions, and I believe we did that, and indeed, we are doing that, but I believe it's up to each one of us to say as to whether they are 100% or 60% fulfilling those. But I believe we all need to improve in one way or the other. We have also seen that we have discussed 
quite extensively with the intention to map out possible strategies and solutions and areas, identify areas where we need uh, critical interventions to be done or some kind of major assessment or adaptation to be done. And I think having listened to what the ED uh, outlined, indeed there are several areas that will require close scrutiny and also continuous engagement of the different uh, institutions that serve in this important sector. Now, I would not like to repeat what the ED has just outlined in terms of the critical areas, but I would like to highlight some of the things that I feel are essential and critical. When I look at the whole broad area of base, the basic education reform, I think for us, in addition to what the ED outlined, for us in the uh, area of higher education that we are called to actually come to the table with, there are two things. We need to look at the in-service training of teachers, but we also have to look at the pre-service training of teachers. The in-service in terms of immediately trying to map out strategies of how do we salvage those who are currently going through AS with what I may call inadequately prepared teachers. What type of immediate interventions that can be done? Of course, we heard from uh, the doctor from uh, uh, NIE that they have already taken up some specific major short courses that are being uh, that they are being put through and so on. But for us, as a permanent system that is here to ensure that Namibian uh, teachers are properly trained, not only today but for the future, I think it is an indictment on us to see to it that those short-term programs uh, to actually help those who are meeting the needs of the education system currently are put through and also to look at the long term in terms of what we need to add into the content of the teachers to ensure that uh, indeed once the program now is rolled out across all our schools we will not be jumping all over the place because by then we will have the right qualified teachers. A country's higher education and training system is an adaptive tool that has to respond as and when required. The new economic growth points require us to be agile and produce the required knowledge and skill, uh, skills based required for the green hydrogen, oil and gas. And the beauty of this is that there are already existing programs within our universities that can be building blocks for these important fields. And this is why, as we speak already, there are awarded students under the scholarship of the Youth for Green Hydrogen who are actually undertaking master's level training at our local universities as well as our achievement centers, those who are inclined to go the technical side. <clears throat> it is therefore important that we have a generic, coordinated higher education and training approach towards addressing new and future national human capital needs as and when they do emerge. I'm saying this because the green hydrogen, oil and gas are not the only areas we are likely to be seeing the call for other important critical areas and we should be prepared as, high, as the higher education sector. The minimum standards. 
I think the minimum standards we are all in agreement that they define who we are as higher education and training. They also map out or help us to map out quality curriculum, as well as quality programs and quality qualifications. I believe the sooner we finalize this a national, rather the minimum standards, the better. For the challenges we have regarding the national qualification framework, I believe will be lessened somewhat. Yes, I hear uh, Professor Namani, the former minister, uh, with regards to the call of inclusion. And I believe you will also agree with me, not you alone, but everyone here, that normally in anything, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. And the beginning does not mean that that's where you reach the final product. You start somewhere, you engage, you perfect, you refine along the process before you actually get to the final program. And I think this is the journey we have embarked on. And I believe what we have done, particularly with the uh, professor who was brought on board, I can say comfortably that we are indeed getting some. Because still, all the players will be involved and engaged and indeed their inputs will be included. Moving on, I think the aspect of proper articulation between TVET qualifications and higher education institutions, in as much as we are saying there is a void, there is a very strong gap it is something that we need to begin to really engage uh, each other on. We need to talk about, we need to already outline specific interventions that will help us to do that well. As I said, as a ministry, we have identified about five institutions that we hope and believe with time as we continue to engage internally as a ministry with those that are involved and extensively also externally with those that are involved in the sector of higher education, we probably will be in a better position to say within the next year or so, we will have filled the gap uh, that was created by the elevation of uh, uh, NAST into a university. Another thing that I want us to maybe also consider is the online education or virtual university, virtual courses. I'm saying this because in higher education, the conventional systems, we know how assessments are done. We have been regulators there, conventional, traditional systems, but with virtual examination, virtual assessments, I think maybe this is where we need creative minds in our education system to really uh, make the nation, the public and everyone out there to say that indeed, when we do assessments online, when we teach online, it is truly authentic, it does expand cognition, it does increase knowledge creation and so on. Because it is something that as a ministry we are grappling with in terms of our engagement with the broader public about some of these new uh, inventions or new interventions into our education system. As I said earlier, Strengthening research in education and research in industry 
is so critical, is so important. Now, when we look at our education system, there are indeed many, as I said earlier, many reforms, many changes that have taken place. And I believe there were studies to say as to whether those, the goals that were set for those uh, reforms and changes were achieved or what. But I would then say, for this basic education reform, which has now uh, since been elevated to um, higher education, I think really we need to map out studies that can uh, look into what it is that we are hoping to achieve. Are we achieving the goals? If not, how, what do we need to do in order to ensure that the set goals are the ones that we are, we are really striving for? Again, research. Like Prof. Mchombu said, compilation of the national research agenda is critical to the development of our country. Critical in the sense that it must be inclusive. The compilation of those thematic areas must be inclusive. The ministries that are expected to drive some of those critical fields must be involved. And the refinement of whatever suggestions that are advanced into thematic areas should be done as a collective. Should be done as a collective, of course with the leadership of the NCRS chief. Another important thing is that I am aware of the fact that there are professional chairs allocated to our universities. UNESCO chair in water, UNESCO chair in climate change, UNESCO chair in I don't know what. So many of them are attached to our universities. It is important that we utilize, we optimize the utilization of this expertise in our country for areas that are critical to improving the livelihoods of our people and also mapping out strategies of how we prevent and address some of the challenges that we face as a nation. Again, I'm looking at our universities, but more so NCRST, to really create clusters of researchers looking at the different areas where the need is critical. And they must be drawn from the various uh, higher education institutions. With regards to NASWAP and the levy, I think those were covered. The only thing is that I can say we need to continue to improve on the systems and processes that make it easier for funds to get to where they need to get in time. In other words, here I'm appealing to both the institutions as well as NASFAP itself. We hear without the invoice, funding will not be released. So it's important that uh, the coordination there is done properly. Now, graduates unemployment, graduates unemployment is compelling the sector to look beyond the set parameters by the establishing acts of this funding instruments. Yes, we fund them as they go through the system. They pass, they finish, some with cum laude and so on. Some also with well mapped out business proposals, but no funding. I know it is not the responsibility of institutions like universities, but it's something that we must and should begin to think about. We must and should begin to think 
about. Of course, funding will be critical. And as a ministry, I believe with the National and the Levy, it is important also to think in terms of putting aside a nominal amount that can actually see to it that indeed when our institutions are saying, but I have these five students grouped together, they intend to do this, the proposal seems to be good. If we put it through the mass microscope of those who understand business ventures, we should be able to say, well, let there be a pilot program to see as to whether if we incubate this, it cannot work. We need to think out of the box if we are to address this youth unemployment, particularly graduate unemployment. Mature entry, I have had a lot of contestation about this for quite some time now. I think maybe it's time that we look in terms of establishing a small technical committee to look into this particular challenge. Uh, and I'm saying this knowing that both UNAM and NAST, um, they have instruments that actually um, identify those who could be uh, funded under NASRAF if they are to come under the mature age. And those are two public uh, universities. All I'm saying is there is need for us to maybe revisit this and see what other dimensions that we need to bring into these instruments to ensure that we also capture the private uh, uh, institutions. Now, with these few remarks, I wish to call upon all of us to commit to regular engagements and exchange of exchanging of uh, constructive views that are aimed at building our sector. Together, I believe we can transform the higher education and training sector for the better. It is through our national education system that we can bring the much needed solutions to our everyday challenges and help Namibia to achieve her outlined goals within the various strategic national documents. And with that, I thank you.